Hello everybody. Um, let's see if this is correct right now. Uh, as you can see, it's quite sunny. We had the 41 degrees Celsius. Hottest day on record in the Netherlands. Uh, you know, just a week, uh, less than a week ago. And it's still warm inside. And um, I had this, this incredible thing uh, lying around. I made this for for uh, a friend of mine who asked me to do this and it's uh, it's really interesting actually it's uh, it's really interesting so I wanted to I wanted to share this with you just quickly um, so what I'm doing here is I am figuring out the world electricity mix uh, 2018 um, this is not as uh, straightforward as you would think because not all the information is uniform. Um, so, for instance, if you look at, you know, the capacity factor for hydro and other, I have to reverse engineer it. Whereas, for instance, the capacity factor for gas, I just simply, you know, pull off the energy information administration website so this is pretty interesting so in 2018 we produced about 26,700 terawatt hours and if you look at you know the percentages 38 percent of all the electricity produced that year was produced by coal so that's almost or it's above 10,000 terawatt hours 3% came from oil, less than 1,000 terawatt hours. 23% came from gas, 6,000 terawatt hours. 10% came from nuclear, 2,600, uh, 20, almost 2,800, uh, 2,700 terawatt hours. And then there's 7% coming from solar, PV, and wind. Now, here's the thing. Wind and solar data is inconclusive. So the world capacity factors for wind and solar are too different from the U.S. capacity factors, which means that if I use U.S. capacity factors, as you can see here, you know, solar, PV and wind actually produce a thousand more or 11, 1200 more than it would produce in the world. So. I will leave it, you know, I will leave it. I'm not going to, you know, try to figure out which one is right or wrong. Pretty sure this one is right. Um, but this gives us a significantly lower capacity factor for wind and solar. And I trust that figure because when I look at, for instance, the capacity factor for solar in the Netherlands, it's only like 10%. And if you if I look for the capacity factor of wind, it's also lower than 37.4%. So the capacity factors for wind and solar in the nuclear uh, in the United States are exemplary. So let's see um, how how does this how does this uh, you know stack up in terms of capacity? So worldwide we have about you know seven thousand uh, seven seven point eight terawatts of capacity uh, coal is 2.1 terawatts oil is less than one terawatt gas is 1.2 terawatt and nuclear is about you know 300 and something uh 300 and something gigawatts i believe that's the incorrect I, I i was thinking about 440 but it's also but it could also be you know that i am um looking at it incorrectly if, if it's the number of nuclear power plants in total 440 i can't remember in any case so these are the figures solar pv and wind according to this and as you can see this is ref uh, let's see how is it is this reverse engineered or not no uh, no, this is not reverse engineered. This just comes from here. Uh, oh, it's from the REN21. Uh, 
report so renewables 2019 global status report so that's pretty interesting so the thing here is i am going to look at the emissions per kilowatt hour so that's 820 you know for coal now what i'm doing here is i'm taking the median I'm taking the median of the IPCC uh, emissions. So what I do here basically is I try to figure out how much that is per terawatt hour because I have all my data in terawatt hours. So in if you look at it from a terawatt hour perspective, it is, it is 820,000 tons of emissions per terawatt hour and since uh coal is 10,000 terawatt hours it naturally it logically follows that the annual emissions are let's see so this is uh kilo mega giga yeah so it's uh, it's uh it's eight gigatons per year no that's incorrect Wait a second. Yeah, it's 8.3 gigatons per year, basically, for coal. Um, and it's uh, it's only 32 million tons for nuclear. Uh, it's more than that for solar, slightly less than that for wind. Hydro is quite high, actually, because of the methane losses, because of the rotting vegetation that will be sitting on the bottom of the of the of the basin so the interesting part here is when you look at the percentage okay when you look at the percentage of emissions then you see that coal is 71 percent of all the emissions in electricity so cutting coal should be the highest priority and uh, that can only be done and this sounds this sounds a little bit you know arrogant I don't know how, how it sounds, uh, but it can be only be done using nuclear. Now, the interesting thing here is I want to uh, see how many IMSRs we would have to build in order to offset these emissions. Now, the IMSR is not completely free from emissions. You have to, you know, gather the materials, uh, make the fuel, uh, put, you know, build a structure to, uh, to, to basically help the IMSR uh, operate. And, uh, but the funny thing is the 300 megawatt thermal unit has a tremendous thermal efficiency it's about 66 percent as you can see two-thirds so 200 uh, megawatts of electricity come out and uh, given you know uh, the same capacity factor as we have used here 92.6 percent that means that the annual production is 1.62 terawatt hours uh, the last one should be 200 as well. I don't know what is 201 there. So the funny thing is, how many units would it would we need to, you know, offset all the electricity needed in the world? That's only 16,000. Sounds like a lot. It's not 16,000, you know, uh, power plants. Imagine we have three, four, imagine we have four or six or eight units uh, per, let's say it's eight units per power plant. That would mean that we need 2,000 power plants. It's about five times as many as we have today. So that's not a stretch. Um, it's This is not, of course, assuming that we actually are going to, you know, uh, put only IMSRs to work in the future but it's doable um, I'm going to add this here I'm just going to insert this here and I said number of power plants number of plants required and eight unit plant right we are going to be um, we're going to be uh, the, 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 the loss for words we are going to be uh, optimistic we are going to say that each plant will have eight IMSRs 
these things are tiny in comparison to uh you know modern eprs of or ap1000s i mean the footprint of an ep of an uh, imsr is like orders of magnitude smaller so well, this looks quite promising if we want to you know uh eliminate all coal power power plants we would need 781 uh power plants imsr power plants to kill coal and we would need about 473 power plants to kill gas now the fun fo the funny thing here is emissions from imsr fuel and material production so this is when we do the equivalent right so when we do the equivalent and the, these are the emissions that you get the life cycle emissions uh this is all small potatoes this is all small potatoes because what we get next is even bigger so right now um i'm going to <laughs> um i'm going to fast forward a bit so the emissions avoided and we we get to the uh to the percent if we look at it percentage wise uh world total emissions we would avoid you know yeah, almost 89 percent uh, in terms of coal we would avoid almost 99 percent oil the same gas 98 percent but even and this is interesting even the renewables solar and wind together solar wind uh is that true is that solar and wind oh no uh wind solar wind okay yeah unknown oh yeah it says unknown so this is so this is solar this is wind okay so even if we would replace all solar and wind that exists today we would be gaining we would be reducing carbon emissions now let that sink in um hydro we would you know eliminate almost 60 percent of all emissions and biomass 96 percent so yeah i just wanted to show you this this was just one model that i've been working on the past few days uh to help a friend of mine and it looks something like this it's pretty interesting um just a thought experiment basically uh using imsr tech at a high thermal efficiency will help you cut a lot of emissions um yeah that's it basically um i wanted to ask you to uh visit uh the gofundme page that i have uh, linked in the description below because i have a lot of stuff to do later this year let me see um if i can find it quickly oh let's see this is my <laughs> this is my uh my uh so so what we have here is basically my itinerary for you know the next couple of months so august the 31st i will be at the i will be presenting um at the european skeptics conference in ghent um i will be uh presenting why skepticism helped me become pro-nuclear then i will be attending climate week in new york uh then uh, i mean this is going to be in september the 20th until the 26th so a lot of costs there october 10th somewhere around maybe multiple days i will be in vienna to attend the iaea conference on climate change and the role of nuclear i will be filming a lot of stuff with my camera let's see if i can get it out here so as you can see i've invested a lot in my camera this year i've bought myself a new lens i bought myself a a monitor to you know make sure that i can um know that my subjects are sharp and such but i still need uh, uh, uh I, I still need some stuff i need new batteries for this thing i need some some wireless uh sound stuff i need a new microphone for it um you know stuff to 
uh, to, to stream with and that's all going to be very expensive plus you can see the traveling that I'm doing is also going to cost me a lot so I need some money and I really hope that you can help me out because the problem is that it's not just these things that are going to cost me a lot of money I also have some windows I need to replace in my house for which I have money set aside there's no problem there but with these costs on top of it it's going to be a problem um, also my car is falling apart so whatever whatever help you can send me please please consider going to the GoFundMe or donate directly I don't I don't I don't care um, so the other things that are left is October 20th is the nuclear pride fest in France in Paris I'm really looking forward to doing that last uh, this year um, earlier this year we did the nuclear pride fest in Brussels I filmed there I uh, I put some some interesting stuff on the internet and the last thing the to be determined Dutch nuclear cost paper is a paper that I wrote uh, about um, in which I compare uh, potential costs of nuclear reactors new nuclear reactors in the netherlands and compare those costs with new solar and new wind installations and it turns out that nuclear is the most competitive source of energy in the netherlands and that's because of the low capacity factor for solar 10 percent 11 percent and the low capacity factor for wind which is you know 25 ish somewhere between 25 and 30 percent which is too low it's simply too low and uh, i am proposing to build five or ten nuclear reactors in the netherlands we actually have uh we actually have areas reserved for nuclear reactors here and i am going to try and whip up you know enough enthusiasm for this plan so that uh, you know other people can run with this ball because i'm not i'm not the guy who will you know do uh, do the um the building and all that stuff and gathering the money and well that's that's not up to me but but i really want to show the dutch public that it is possible to do it cheaply efficiently um we have all the correct circumstances for nuclear to flourish so um i hope that i can uh you know um uh, organize several gatherings in which i you know present my findings and catch some policy makers or you know uh, industry buffs who uh, want to uh, you know uh, take this ball from me and uh, keep running with it in any case uh, consider donating because it's going to cost me a lot of money and it's not because I, I i am rich i'm far from rich my house is falling apart my car is falling apart and i still want to do nuclear act activism and this activism simply is not cheap so thank you all for watching have a nice day bye bye